nerd. Hey, I'm Ryan. And I'm Steve, and this is 60 Cycle Hum, the guitar buying, selling, modding, training, fixing, breaking, reviewing, playing podcast. <laughs> this first ad was uh, found by me. I found this one on our local Craigslist. It is a uh, yeah. te Telecaster Deluxe body for $40. I feel like you originally sent this to me like, like a month ago. I'm really surprised it hasn't sold. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised it hasn't sold too. Not maybe not for forty bucks. I feel like it's pretty rough. Do you think it would go for forty bucks? No, I am not surprised it hasn't sold at all. See, this is where we the camera pays off because you like <laughs> there's so much emotion in my face. Yeah, um, so you're always just dripping with emotion. Yeah. Uh, so this is a have a Telecaster Deluxe body for sale. It's one I bought on Reverb and never really used. Comes with strap buttons and string ferrules. Bridge was relocated to its proper location from previous owner's settings. It's a homemade body, so routing looks a bit rough. It will set up just fine it with any telly neck you put on it. $40 cash money. Um, the routing's not the only thing that I looks mean, rough. Uh, yeah, the paint job's not great. The whole shape um, of the body is wonky. Look at the shape of the top horn and like follow, yeah. follow the edge around the bottom horn like it's just wonky in a couple like key places this is not a not a great look no um. <laughs> also like it says that the bridge was relocated it, it it makes it sound like it was only relocated once i'm looking at that thing like how many times did they try with that bridge there are like a thousand holes Right. There's um I guess if I if well, I, a bunch if of them I look like at it, it of, yeah. If I guess if I look at it it is a bunch it, of them <laughs> <laughs> You go. A bunch of them have been like filled back in. Yeah. Um but that's the other thing that like it says it comes with string ferrules but I don't see anywhere for the I mean I guess I guess that goes through. It just looks weird. Yeah. And, and so in turn, like, I'm trying to figure out exactly, I guess, the outside holes. Well, do you see the string? Where the screws go? Did you look at the string ferrules on the back? <laughs> they're totally, like, one is not lined up with the others, and they're all spaced differently. <laughs> this thing yeah, is it's, so wonky. But it comes with string ferrules, Ryan. That's yeah. A, that's a big value. Yeah. Big value. Uh, this guitar body would be worth eight dollars but those ferrules man that pushes it up to 40 right there uh <laughs> right 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 now i just googled telecaster body on ebay and found a pine caster barn caster pine caster that like looks like it was made by someone who knows what they're doing it's made by no moon laser uh-huh um guitar bodies for ten dollars there is no reserve. I don't know what this will end up going for. Oh, it's on eBay. There's actually a couple of these. It's like a pine, like I said, it's a pine caster. Yeah. Um, are you actually like messing around with your phone at all? Can I send this to you? Uh, yeah, I guess you could send it to me. I, I hopefully it doesn't end the call when you send me something. We've never done this before. I'm, well, I'm sending people. I'm sending it on. Fa I'm sending it through just Facebook. So. Okay. Let's see um, if it'll open. But yeah, there's a few. There's a few of these uh, barn caster. Like that, they look halfway decent. Like they're if you're into that sort of thing, I just sent you one. Are There's you even one like a not? Are you asking me if I'm barn sexual? Uh, I already know you're lumber sexual. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, yeah. That's that's a nice looking body with a nitro and there's finish. There's a bunch of. I mean, it's got twenty dollars shipping. Of, only one bit yeah. on it. When does this end? Yeah. Oh, In five like days. Six days. I bet it'll go there's for a bunch, 50 bucks or something. There's a bunch of like naughty pine like bodies and stuff on eBay that are like this same price plus shipping. Yeah. That look like, again, that they were actually made by somebody who at least halfway knew what they were doing. Now, who knows? Like you might actually buy one of these. This one, I'm looking at another one that's by Wall Drop. Um, 
and you might get it and you know everything is wrong but i at least think you've got a better shot on goal yeah versus this thing that looks like uh, it was routed with a freaking spoon it looks like a prototype for an electric guitar from like the 30s you know the way it's like oh we kind of cut the shape out with a bandsaw I don't, didn't really have a tam- template and uh we routed out for a pickup but it wasn't right quite right so we routed again and just like Everything looks like a second attempt or a third or fourth attempt on this thing. Just the routing is just not even chiseled. It just looks really, really rough. Like, I am not good at routing. I am not good at clean work. And for me to criticize this thing means a lot. (laughs) Like, I think I could do a cleaner job than this of making a guitar body. With Would you just route the... Do you have a router? Would you just route this with the drill bit? Yeah, I, I have a router and I have router bits. I don't need to use a drill bit. I have actual router bits, Steve. Oh. <laughs> I know, fancy stuff. Fan- my, fancy. My problem is, is I just don't plan out far enough ahead and I make mistakes along the way and then I just bondo it back up right. and, and keep going. <laughs> <laughs> but this, like, they skipped the bondo step. They should have <laughs> included at least, like, 12 ounces of bondo in this guitar and restarted. <laughs> the crazy thing, The crazy thing with this is when you zoom in, on the one picture, well, not zoom in, but the one picture you have that where you can see the wood, uh-huh. it looks like it might not be a total piece of garbage. No, it's made out of wood. Um, I mean, <laughs> this came from a tree at some point. Um, but yeah, this is just. I I mean this is, this is I a, feel, this I feel is, like you would. Have, this is so home done that no one should sell this. You just accept this as your your homemade project. And when you don't want it anymore, like I know, I know we joke about it, but you, this is firewood. You burn it when you're done with it. Yeah, this is not yeah. re- redeemable for anyone. It's certainly not worth forty dollars. Not even as like uh, just a pleasantry to uh, you know establish that you have made a transaction with someone. Like this is a one dollar transaction, just to be like, yeah, yeah. This you is are a. The owner uh, now. This is a. I've got five bodies. Uh, buried in my basement. Uh, if you buy four of them, I'll throw in this one for free. Right, right. I'm. If you've got five bodies buried in the basement, I just, I just say add this one to the pile, make it six. You know. Right, and it's like so. You just say like, you know, you you sell those other five bodies for for your forty dollars a piece or whatever, and this one like, oh yeah, just take it. That's oh no, sure, like, yeah, yeah. I thought you were making a murder joke, like a serial killer joke bodies in the basement i would never make a joke about death ryan <laughs> not in these dark times not in this i'm climate. not like you not in this climate i'm not like you <laughs> yeah I all think, right man uh what i think we agree on this thing and there's there's nothing else we need to say about it at this point like just to, if if you're a listening person who's selling this there's a chance they could be a listener if you're listening like Lower the price, give it away, or throw it in the fireplace, you know? Yeah, yeah. First, put it on a, on a scale. That's the, the first way you give it away. <laughs> and then you just put it on a buy nothing or, you know. Right, right. Actually, don't put it on buy nothing because that's hyper local and you don't want anyone to know that you were once the owner of this. I mean, the fact that they're saying that the previous owner moved, uh, like they had to move the bridge from the previous owner means that the person who has it now is not the person who made it, which means they should have no emotional connection to it. They should just be looking to get rid of it. Like this is here's what I don't get. Okay. What don't you get, Steve? Here's what I don't, what I don't get is Lay it they on me. say they moved the, they moved the bridge to the proper position, but they moved it forward. So, I mean, I, I guess I can kind of see how that works, but I feel like they moved it such a small distance and it was such a small distance forward. I'm just like, couldn't you have just gotten a longer screw? Yeah, for the, like, uh, is for that, the saddles. Is that movement? Yeah, is that movement even enough to like fix an intonation problem? It, I mean, maybe, maybe it, it was. Is. Maybe it, it just wasn't doesn't for intonation. Seem like it is. Maybe it was for fitting a pickup in that route. Maybe the the pickup didn't fit. Maybe that second route Man, we're seeing for a single coil uh, is what had to be accommodated. Now that now that I look at that route, I love that you can see the two spots where like the dude just fell asleep and you know routed out a little bit of the top of the body. 
Like there's just yeah. a, there's just missing paint there. Like it was it was still running when he pulled the router away and and he kissed it a little bit with the blade. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. And the whole thing looks like it was carved out with a butter knife. It really does. <laughs> so what's new with you, man? All right, man. How are you doing? Um I I'm I'm doing all right. I'm still at work, which or not at work. I'm still going into the office every day. Oh, okay. Um, which is why we're doing it this way. Yeah. Um, because I, we've had three sick people. Now we haven't. I know at least some of those people were trying to get tested, um, and I just haven't. I haven't gotten any updates on it. But um, yeah, man, it's crazy. Crazy times we're living in. Hopefully, hopefully next week we can do this in person if things have cooled down but i mean if you got sick people at work it takes two weeks until you, you get this thing yeah so maybe not every morning i wake up and i think i've got it but then i just realize that <laughs> maybe i'm hung over oh my gosh yeah well we've been on like full lockdown over here my wife is taking it pretty seriously um like if i go to the grocery store if i brave the grocery store to pick <laughs> Excuse me. That was a nut in my throat. I, I'm not coughing because I'm sick. Uh, don't worry. You can't catch it over the phone, Steve, yet. We might find out later <laughs> that you can. Um, and come back from the store after picking stuff up, and my wife is like, strip down and go shower off and, and scrub with soap and everything. Like, we're, we're in, like, wow. full, like, uh, you know, Andromeda strain mode over here. Jeez. Which, honestly, isn't that different. Just besides, you know, the, the deep cleaning stuff. When we come in and out of the airlock, I mean, we're both self-employed. We're both at home like all day, every day, anyways. So like, it barely feels like anything's different. But uh, you know, telepodcasting is definitely different for me. <laughs> I'm I I much prefer yeah. having uh, having you in the room with me. I mean, I've got your uh, you have I've got <laughs> cardboard Steve here with me, keeping me company. Lauren made yeah. a, a cardboard version of you <laughs> earlier today. <laughs> Um, you haven't really done besides Tone Mob. Have you done it? Have you jumped in on any other podcasts? I guess. Oh did you yeah. You ever call into Gear Slum? Um. Yeah, I called in the Gear Slum. I think I was on Clifton's show. Oh, or that's right. Maybe that's right. Diaz's show once or twice. I don't know. Every now and then, I get called in to to be on someone's show, and I'm always a willing participant. I always think it's fun because right. I get to just not actually have to work it like doing a good show and I just get to wreck other people's shows so but right, it, yeah. I, I'm uh, not totally looking forward to editing this I'll say that it'll be fine yeah it'll be fine I'm gonna I'm gonna send you this beautiful like I, we just need to figure out what uh, compression like what uh, quality of mp3 you want from me and, and then it'll, everything will be fine lowest quality Steve just bump it down lowest low Bump it all. You want me to bump it down before you drop it in? Yeah, bit crush I'm gonna it. send you a. I'm, I'm gonna send you a six, uh, eight bit file. <laughs> people, people will love that. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna be like, what's what's a better quality, this phone call or the audio that Steve recorded? So, uh, what's new with your gear life, man? You have any? Uh, oh yeah. So <laughs> you getting anything um, shipped to you? <laughs> you go into Guitar Center to render those essential I, I services um but uh yeah i put my i finally put my board together so the top half of my board is basically my board right now is um is about 45 percent caroline guitar company 45 percent uh big ear pedals and 10 percent other uh-huh um so i've got like one matthews pedal on there oh i've got a pedal from uh, joe at like my pedals and I've got a T, the TC Electronic Tuner. Um, and then everything else is either Big Ear. I've got three Big Ear pedals on there right now. And uh, four Caroline pedals on there. The Caroline pedals just look so clean. And yeah. they're all top mount jacks that, like, they're just, like, they're, they're a, that's a pedal line that's begging to be collected. Like, I know someone out there has, like, every pedal. And... And you know, I mean, um, also they're just really good too. Like they're really oh yeah good yeah. creative pedals. You know, I'm kind of surprised I don't have yeah. any Caroline stuff. It's because you get it all the time, and I just live vicariously through you that you have them. Like right. oh, well, I, I need don't to, need br to, get I need to bring them over. Yeah, 
I need to bring him over and mess around. And I was playing through them. I actually played last night, so I put it all together. And my first thought was like, well, I, you know, it took me two months to, to put this board together because I just, like, by the time I have enough space to work on this stuff, it's like 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. And so it's like, oh, do I do this or do I watch TV? And I'm like, oh, I'll watch TV. But last night, I finally did it. And then I was like, you know what? Like, I've got a pair. Of, I've got a pair of uh, over ears down here. I've got this. I've got all my guitars down here. Like, so I actually spent probably a good, I don't know, half an hour, maybe an hour, like just messing around with pedals and seeing what everything sounded like. Nice. So, um, the loaf from from Big Ear sounds great. Uh, I got the K2 from Like My Pedals. That thing is really cool. It's like a Klon style drive. It's it's got a pretty good range on it. I found myself at least with the with the uh, Jag. I was playing the Jag Sting because it's it's the smallest. It's not the smallest guitar I have, but it's the smallest guitar with a fr- semi fresh set of strings on it. <laughs> gotcha. Um, the woodcutter, of course. The loaf into the woodcutter. It, it was a, a trip. I was actually I was on a Grant's uh, quarantine time this morning. How did that go? Um, I wasn't I wasn't able to catch it. I think because we share an account. <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't see oh, the notification yeah. for it. I should have uh, jumped Lauren over to one of my. On it. I should have jumped over to, over to one of my other accounts. I didn't think of that till now. Right. Um, it was fun. We actually like talked very little about. I, I watched, uh, we talked very little about gear. We kind of just, uh, there's a lot of geography. He went through the questions that people had. Yeah. We did not talk about uh, Super Rich Steve uh, very much. Uh, did he, th- actually at did, all. Did he throw up when uh, when he was doing the show with you? No, no. He uh, had the courtesy to uh, prepare himself. Okay, good. Properly. Well, when I did when I did his morning show with him, I, he threw up a little bit. So. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I yeah. would, I, you know, if I was doing him, well, uh, Morning live stream with you, I'd throw up too. <laughs> yeah, he made it sound like it was some other thing. He's like, no, no, it's not you. It's not you. But he, we, like, refused to make eye contact with me after that. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the rest of my board, I've got the Matthews Cathremist on there. Um, the, the Caroline Kilobyte, the Caroline Megabyte, which feels a little redundant, but they're not. No. Um, and then and the Meteor from Caroline and the the Parabola the Tremolo, and then I wrap that all up with the L from uh, nice. from Bigger Pedals. So nice. the, the L is a nice like very classic lush reverb. I actually found I was surprised. Um, I'm I'm kind of well. You did the L demo, right? Yeah, yeah. How do you feel about the L as like a kind of a spring? style reverb the l is this really nice sweet space between like a belt and brick style like spring reverb and like a modern like churchy modulated like ambient verb like it just lives in that in between space and is is pretty freaking great it lived on my board for a long time yeah i, I love that i had thing. both the, i i actually like both the the L and the the Meteor, um, when you like, I was finding when I was digging in on it, like there was definitely a a real. I don't, I don't know if I'd call it spring, but definitely like a rockabilly slap. Oh yeah, going on. Well, that's with the those. that's the Belton brick thing. Is that is that kind of clicky slapback sort of sound? Yeah. So it, it was a. Uh, I really like the way it sounds. I'm hoping, you know, it's. It sounded good through headphones. I, I hope at some point I can actually get it, you know, really yeah. um, going on something. But Run it through an amp or even, that's the, always, you know, through the house at church or whatever. Yeah, well, even, yeah, and even at church, like, I'm going to be wearing ears. So that's right. That's kind of whatever. But uh, I did want to update you. Uh, we did, I think we solved the dryer ghost. <laughs> okay, Up me, update on me. Oh god, I can't talk. I'm so excited. Update me on the Dryer Ghost. Dryer Ghost 2020. Uh, we th- well, I mean, it's not really that exciting. Uh, I asked Melissa this morning, and she thinks it was the cat. Ah, like she thinks she thinks the cat knocked over something that hit the dryer, or like hit the washing machine really loud. And so I, I think just because she was like half asleep when it happened it was like yeah it startled her you know you know when you're half asleep and you just snap too and you're like wide awake but none of your logic 
yeah, centers yeah. are working. Uh, I think it was one of those. I've had moments like that where I'm woken up in the middle of the night by maybe nothing, but in my head it's like a sound woke me up. There's a sound in the house, and then I'm walking around the under in the house in my underwear, like looking for an intruder. And I'm like, I'm not armed. What am I going to do if I do find someone or something? And it's like, I should just go back to bed. <laughs> but now that I've got kids and they're waking me up all the time, I don't experience that anymore. If something wakes me up, I'm just like, leave me alone. <laughs> Man, I don't care. Ro- take all my stuff. Just let me sleep. Yeah. I just want to sleep. <laughs> the valuables are in the other room. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what's new with you man so i'm gonna start a new board project uh i'm holding it up here for the viewers to see the listeners will have to hear my description it is the big big board for mono the company that makes the cases uh when i got that surfy bear i decided that i wanted to finally do what i've been talking about forever and make a big pedals board and then I got um, that Blood Moon uh, fuzz and Blood, overdrive. The Blood Buzz. Blood Buzz, that's right. Blood Moon is a reverb yeah. from, from Mr. Black. Uh, the Blood Buzz, and uh, that thing is huge. So it kind of cemented my resolve to actually do this thing. I wrote mono, and I was like, hey, can I have a really big board? And I'm like, yeah, it's on its way. And when it showed up, I was just really intimidated by the size of this thing. Uh, that's what she said. And then uh, <laughs> I started putting the pedals on it. I was like, no, this is right. This is the right size. <laughs> it's going to be a fairly like limited pedal board, <laughs> but still be humongous. It is pretty wild. Like, I'm not exaggerating. Like, I think it's just like two inches shorter than Gary when you put it up on its side. Gary is our air conditioner in here. Right. So it, what's that? Uh, what's the delay? Uh, that is a tube. It's called a tube echo reverb. Someone sent me that for a uh, a secret Santa a couple of years back. Um, I'm gonna use that as a placeholder for now when I do the first wire up of this thing, uh, and then eventually I want to replace it with a Line Six DL4 because that's like the classic, you know. Right. Also, I want to get some color on the board. I realize like all my big pedals. Like when pedals are really big, the manufacturers are like, this is already ridiculous. We're going to make it kind of like subdued colors. Everything is gray and black. I need to get some color on the board. And a DL4 will do that. I was also thinking like, maybe I should get like a snarling dog's wah to get some more color on the board. It's something I'm thinking in colors. Like I just feel, I like to have colorful stuff and it just looks so monochromatic with all these big black and silver metal pedals, you know? Yeah. It's only cool to go monochromatic on purpose. Like when you accidentally do it, it's like, I always feel like it's a little bit of a bummer. Yeah, and it's just not my personality, you know? I, I like to have a splash of color in my life. And if I'm going to go big, I want it to be obnoxious in a way. <laughs> Maybe I need yeah, to just like you. spray paint. Exactly, big and obnoxious. That's what everyone says about me. <laughs> um, I, I feel, I will say, I feel like you, both your wall and volume pedal are not big enough. I know. Well, that I'm I'm really thinking like I don't actually need those and I could swap both of those out for a whammy and do like a single whammy on there. Yeah, I, I think that would be better um, or I would say because the thing is, is that's a VP junior, right? Yeah, I need the, the VP senior. It's. Yeah, it's not even big. That, yeah. That's the smaller of the Ernie Ball volume pedals. Well, it's the medium size now because they've got small, slightly smaller ones. Do they, do they have a smaller one? Well, I and think then, they like, do. And then, like, I'm sure you could, I'm sure, like, uh, the, is it the Steve Vai? Um, yeah. Is it is he the one, the signature, the little alligator wall pedal? Well, the, al- the little alligator is a volume and it's spring-loaded. Have you ever messed with one of those? Ah, uh, like it always return um, it always it. returns to full volume and so you can go really fast and flutter you with it because it like raises with your foot. Gotcha. At least I'm I just think that's the one, like, the one I'm remembering. Oh, it's the it's the Steve Vai, the bad horsey that I'm thinking of. Yeah, yeah. Either that one or like I mean, I don't the, know the Mark Tremont. All the Morley was like any are of huge. those Morleys. Yeah, they're huge. Yeah, way bigger than they need to be. That's what you need. But I, I, I really think that, that's, the, what, uh, that's what she said. 
<laughs> the uh, the whammy is the way to go for me. To and it's like an extra weird thing. I don't have one on any other board, so it'd be it'd be fun to have one around. If I'm going big with a pedal board, like do I even really need to fudge around with volume pedals? I'm not going to be doing like churchy swells. I'm going to have one delay on here max. You know, it's it's going to be more of a rock and roll board. So that's what I'm thinking, anyways. Right. All right, you want to talk about the album? Yeah. We did a, We did listen to an album this week. Yeah, we listened to Courtney Barnett's, um, I guess it's their her debut album. It's called um, Sometimes I Sit and Think and Sometimes I Just Sit. <laughs> I had never um, heard of this tr- person before or this band. There's like... I I know that she had something going on that at least was getting her talked about on the radio, but I could not figure out what song that was. Yeah, I had never heard any of these songs before. This was fun for me because I had had no no connection coming into it. It's just like, oh, here's just new music. Yeah. Uh, This is considered her debut studio album from 2015. Um, It sounds like so long ago now. I know. What's your uh, opening thought on all of this? Well, I think you and I uh, are going to agree a lot on this in that it just sounds like quintessential, like late 90s girl rock. Like it, it's just yeah. like yeah. if if there's cliches, it hits them all. If there's influences, it's just dripping with influences. And it does it in a really effective, fun like very enjoyable sort of way. Like it never feels like, oh, this is just lifting a bunch of stuff. It feels like this could have existed in 1997 and it would have freaking blown up the radio. It would have been scorched earth. Nothing else would have been able to compete with it. Like it feels legit, you know, as someone who like yeah. ca- came of age during that, you know, time in, you know, alt radio uh, culture or whatever, uh, when the whole like girl rock thing was going on, like you could have told me besides like the production values, which are a little bit slicker than they were back then. You could have told me like, Oh, th- this was a, a band from like 1996. And I would not have questioned you at all. Right. Um, my, you know, just from the open, the, the first track is like, just smashes you in the face. It's the opener is, is a fantastic song. Um, yeah. Yeah. For the, you know, my dumb thing is I didn't write down the actual names of any of the songs. You know, I kind of my notes. I only took either. my notes, uh, but oh. it's called Elevator Operator, and uh, my my notes on that were great opening track, and that that there was like the a dry fuzz and like a gated fuzz for all the guitars. Yeah, and um, oh, and I gu- just like the whole time, yeah. I I just thought like that was like if if you would have played this and been like. Oh, this is this is like a breeder's track, but like, you know, the deals like drank a lot of whiskey and smoked a ton of cigarettes before they recorded this. Yeah. And also now they're Australian. Oh, yeah. Um, You could hear the Australian accent hard. Like this was like, yeah, full on like Ozploitation. (laughs) 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 It might as well be uh, Courtney Dundee, you know. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I kept writing down like uh, influences that I was hearing in it. Liz Fair, Dressy Bessie, Mazzy Star. I was hearing like Velvet Underground floating around in there, like, and and it all like hits stuff that I really like. So I I had a great time listening to this because it was just a lot of what I already like. You know, I'm gonna have to look up right. You know, other. I think she has one other album. I think I saw on Wikipedia. I'll have to look that up and give it a listen. I, I'm What's honestly that? surprised like none of this has ever come up on my Pandora because it's so squarely. I mean, maybe, maybe it has. Maybe no. it has and you just didn't look. No, I haven't heard any of this. It's All so right. squarely in my wheelhouse. You'd think the algorithm would figure me out and, and suggest it to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Over and over again, like there, like I, I totally agree. Like, um, you know, I'm hearing I'm I'm hearing a lot of like the breeders. I'm hearing a lot yeah. of Liz Fair. I'm hearing like anytime it like slows down or gets like super like there's a couple songs like the second song 
has much more of like a bluesy, like laid back feel, which is like was very much Cheryl Crow's wheelhouse yeah, yeah. in the nineties. Totally. You know, um, so, and none of that, like, you know, some, some, I always think of like that, uh, I think it was, I forget which, whatever we sent to, to San Diego city beat where the guy's review of it was like, well, you can clearly tell who the influences are. And it's like an insult. And I, you know, definitely none of that is an insult because this is definitely like, it's a fresh take. It's a fresh voice, but right. Right. But, um, you know, it's, 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 it's its own thing, but it's very clearly part of a lineage. Like if I was going to make a movie, about the mid to late 90s and cast you know a fictitious band in it like this this would be the top of the list you know like if i was gonna do what was the the movie with the band from the 60s the wonders what was the name of that movie Bone eaters uh that thing you do that thing you do if there's gonna make a 1990s version of that thing you do like this is the sort of band i'd be i'd be hunting down you know Right. And it would like they would exist in a world alongside of the Liz Fairs and, you know, the no doubts and uh, the garbages and, yeah. the, and the breeders of the world. You know, there'd be someone playing Kim Deal and the lead singer would be hanging out with her and stuff. Yeah, I'm I'm actually looking at your notes. Yeah, I put them in the Google Drive so I didn't have to pull them up on my phone. And one of them is, I appreciate that this full album is on YouTube. Yeah. No ad breaks. Um, most of the music I listen to is in this format. When I'm at work, is like just one track, sixty minutes long. So I, I just I, nice. that made me that made me laugh. Yeah. Um, because we keep yeah, finding, I think, we, uh, keep, we keep finding these you know YouTube playlists for these albums, and it's like there's an ad at the beginning and ending of each video. And each video is a song, so every three and a half minutes, you're having to sit through two ads that are bumped up <laughs> next to each other. <laughs> is that what what uh what browser do you use? Uh, Chrome. Do you not have any ad block on? No, I should look into that. I don't because I don't get any YouTube ads. Obviously, don't you have you should be YouTube using br- Premium or Red or something like that or music? But when I'm at work, when I'm at work, I use our account. I use the 60 cycle hum account at work because I'm checking comments all day. Oh, interesting. I want to defend your honor. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. <laughs> um, but I use, uh, I use brave at work and I use brave at home, which is Chrome based, but it has all the built in ad blocking. And plus while I use it, I'm making money because they give you these ad pop-ups that are worth like 16 cents a piece. Yeah, but then if you click on YouTube videos, that person's not making money off of ad revenue. You're stealing, Steve. That, I'm That's how I'm I make, stealing how I make from my the, living and I'm, you're blocking it. I'm stealing from the poor to pay for the poor. <laughs> I mean, with all those album uh YouTube videos, you know, all that money's just going to go to, you know, a big label somewhere. So it's fine. Steal from those people. Whatever. <laughs> it's not like it goes back in the pockets of the artists, right? There's no way. I mean, in a very, very roundabout way, you know, YouTube is is paying $1 per thousand views to the record label. And the record label is paying, you know, $1 per thousand uh, dollars from YouTube. Yeah. I was actually shocked at the uh, the amount of plays on this album. It was in the it was squarely up in the millions. I remember when you on off that link. So someone is making money off of that uh, off of that album drop there. It made me think that maybe I should drop my full Dinosaur Ghost album on YouTube somewhere, even though CD Baby will, you know, demonetize it for me or whatever. Uh, it could st- still be a fun thing for people to listen to. Maybe I should feel a little bit bad because that the YouTube link is actually for um, Milk Records, which is like a Melbourne. Uh huh. Based, sorry, Melbourne. So it's her I'm record label. The Australian one. It's a label she's um, on. Oh my! It's actually it is hers. It's the uh, money she borrowed from her grandmother to start Milk Records. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, so way to go, so, Steve. Uh, I guess we'll... feel bad. Yeesh. now. <laughs> well, I, I watched the ads. It's probably not even monetized. <laughs> 
<laughs> we're probably hand wringing over nothing over here. <laughs> All right, you want to hit the sponsors? Get us uh, figure out uh, how to divide up the door. You know. Ah, oh, my computer's making noise. Sorry. Um. Yeah, this. Uh, let me look something up. Sure. This sure. will help. We're gonna hit that money zone. We're gonna get sued by Max Fund for talking about money zone. They yeah, canceled yeah. the Max Fund drive. We Take will us to still the very happily. We will very happily take your money. Oh yeah. Um, I'm I I am drinking a beer. That's for sure. Um, this week's first sponsor is Runway Audio. Um, I talked to Austin today. Well, not today. Well, today of recording, and um, they are still shipping out cables. So if you need a cable right now, in uh in this time of coronavirus, if you need a cable and coronaviruses is over you know go check out runway audio um uh they do all kinds of cables they do instrument cables they do patch cables um, yeah i've got two of their cables six right inch. Here. well you've got the you've got the instrument cables but they do patch cables from six to 24 inches yeah um they're uh they've got different term terminations they use a thinner version of the lead cable so it's a super low capacitance cable. I was actually talking to Austin today, and he was saying, telling me that uh, their cable is such a low capacitance cable that if that basically, if you go to like Guitar Center and just buy whatever cable they have on the wall, that's like twenty bucks or whatever. Um, that Runway Audio's fifty foot cable is equivalent to like a ten foot cable in oh, terms wow. of clarity. Um, that's how low their their uh, capacitance is. Well, it, it, um, I mean, I don't know if I'd ever be able to hear the difference between cables like that. But a uh, here's some marketing talk. A unique selling proposition you told me about later from this uh, from this phone call you had is that they were saying that they've never once had a return of a cable in years of business. Yeah. Yeah, in like in like three or four years. Yeah, when I when I'm and, holding uh, this, I'm, these cables here, they feel just so freaking beefy that I kind of believe it. Like they don't feel like this is a cable that's gonna fail <laughs> under normal circumstances. These are really stiff, beefy beasts of cables. Like these are like take them on the road and don't worry cables. Yeah, and they do have a lifetime manufacturer guarantee. They just don't have to use it. Whose lifetime, um, Steve? They, I mean, these are troubling times. We don't know how long a lifetime that's is. That's true. That's true. Um, they do do custom length and color options if you hit up their custom shop. On top of all of that, they do looms. And I know um, I've actually spent a lot of time thinking about getting a loom. I don't have one uh, because of the way I'm set up. I don't I don't really know if I if I need one. Says when I use in ears, my in ear station is on the left, and yeah, uh, my cable comes out the right. But, you know, if you're looking for an option with Loom, they also do Looms with power. Um, hit them up. Check out the Looms on their on their website. Yeah. If They've you're got a stereo Loom. If you're someone who runs into, power. like, you're plugging an acoustic guitar into, you know, something, and then you've also got an in-ear coming from a source on the floor or something like that, a Loom is great. You put, you know, the cables that you need together into one cable it all runs up to your guitar and then splits off at the guitar and you could run your in-ears off of it or you could, you know, if there's other stuff you need to run off of it, say you're running some sort of fancy like Rickenbacker that's got dual outputs, you could loom two cables together instead of dragging two cables around separately. Like, looms are smart. They're yeah. a good way to go. You know, I think the biggest thing with all of this is their instrument cables, their patch cables, they might be a little more than you would spend for like the cheapest stuff at a store. Right. But if you're like you or me, like we're talking about our pedal boards earlier, like the pedal board that I have put together right now, it's taken years and it's taken some gifts, but mm -hmm. that's like a, a multi thousand dollar pedal board. The idea that like my in my cable going in and my cable going out are just going to be like whatever I can find at the store on a pedal board. That's like, you know, a couple thousand dollars. Sure, like, sure. When you put when you put it in that context, it just sounds like I'm a dumbass if I don't get good cables. Well, I'd say like you don't need to go out and buy like the most expensive cables on the market, but at a certain point, like you definitely don't want to have the cheapest cables on the market either. Like 
like get yourself something that isn't going to fail on you when you're playing a gig. Something that you can trust, you know? Get yourself I, I, a runway audio cable, man. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, Steve. Uh, you want to tackle this topic with me? Yeah, this is a, a combo of, uh, of things. Um, first, uh, Ryan Ratasky from Fuzzrocious Pedals says, yeah. I've heard of a virus in a human and a virus in a computer, but a virus in the gear industry. Brands can't sell. Consumers can't buy. Things are shutting down. Do brands lower prices and race to the bottom after this? Do brands just wait it out and wait for the consumer to recoup fund money? Or uh, do consumers just hope this will blow over and buy, buy, buy? I, I got to be honest, man. I'm in a little bit of a buy, buy, buy state, I feel like. And maybe that's dumb. I've definitely seen a few people online who are like doing retail therapy hard right now. Um, yeah. And also... Uh, I don't know where it's going to go. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Um, yeah, it's, it's a really interesting time with all this, you know, quarantine stuff. And there's a lot of industries that are hurting because of it. I mean, clearly, you know, restaurant industries, you know, entertainment industries, travel industries, things like that are really having a tough time. And then you take an industry that's based around, a group of people that historically don't make a ton of money and tend to, you know, shop irresponsibly <laughs> with the little bit of money that they do have. And when they don't have any money at all, we're talking about musicians here, uh, the whole industry is going to suffer, especially when, you know, like shipping is getting shut down or people are weary of shipping. They don't want to have stuff sent to, sent to their house because they don't know how this will spread. Like I'm getting stuff here all the time. I don't know if that's infecting my family. I might be doing you a, a favor by tell a podcasting with you now because yeah. it, it could just be crawling with uh with covid bacteria over here or virus it's not bacteria yeah. um who knows because with all these boxes but, but showing you, up you know i think the other side of it is i think people who i think there is you know some consumers are going to have to recoup fund money i think a lot of people um you know the hobbyist I think it's probably just going to be waiting it out. And as soon as they get the all clear and go back to work, there's going to be all this money that they haven't been spending. Yeah. Um, but I think it is, it's, it's really interesting. You know, one of the things, again, when I was talking to, um, to hanging out with Grant this morning, one of the things that he mentioned is, uh, Tom Cram from spiral effects, uh -huh. um, had mentioned somewhere that he's like spray, like every single thing that he receives like every package he's like spraying it down before he brings it inside the house like to protect himself and then kind of like to pass that yeah care on to uh the customer or onto the customer yeah. so so it's just kind of like wild um that that that's all going on but i, you know, I know a lot of uh, i've seen a number of brands talk about shutting down and they're doing their last shipments and well a couple and of brands of i know because, are like there's there's they're sending various workers home with carloads of supplies be like hey go home for two weeks and just you know put these boards together assemble pedals right interesting like here's here's a load of of completed pedals when orders come in ship them out from your home you know stuff like that and right i know walrus is doing that i know jhs is doing that i'm sure a few other brands are doing that it's it's wild times right now Right. And, and eventually, well, eventually side, if this doesn't, if, you know, we don't get out of this quarantine quickly, eventually they're going to run out of stuff and have to go back and make more runs. And I, I follow uh, the owner of Pictronics and uh, and Supro on Facebook. Right. And he keeps posting videos of him alone in his warehouse, like managing everything he can, like loading orders and shipping stuff out. And like, he's just like, I'm here alone. I'm, I'm the the one person That's behind crazy. behind these brands right now, just shipping stuff out and managing inventory. That's a trip. Yeah, I mean, and the, the other part of that is, um, you know, on, on the consumer side, I I was talking, you know, with like the for example, like the Craigslist stuff. Like, is it even safe to go meet up a rand meet up with a rando in a parking lot right now? Like, I mean, I. I've been cruising Craigslist looking at deals and I'm seeing people start to tease like high value stuff, like putting their feelers out there like, Oh, anyone, uh, 
Anyone want my Benson amp? Anyone want my uh, my Tone King here? And they're putting them up at you know normal prices, but I have a feeling they're like if I if you know if things don't turn around soon, I'm gonna need to move this for real, sort of desperation. But I'm like, right? How do I pitch that to my family? Like, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna go pick up another because I'm not gonna be buying a Benson no matter the price. I'm not gonna be able to afford that. Hey, honey, I'm gonna go pick up a Squire body for fifteen dollars today. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, I'll spray it down when I get home. Like, it's not going to fly. It's like, you don't need that. Don't bother with that. Like, why are you wasting your time, like, risking bringing something home, doing this stuff? So I think there is, on the used market, I think we're going to see, you know, risk yourself prices to come and get things. And it might be a good time for opportunists out there that are looking for a future flip or something that they really want. I don't know. But I've also just noticed that there's not a lot of stuff going up on Craigslist right now. So, oh there's, really? There's that too. Yeah. Is, right. Right now is actually like today is probably the first time I've gone on Craigslist in um in a minute. Like it's it's been a while since I've just I've been unless I'm looking for something specific, I just haven't really been like browsing. Yeah. Um. What What so, are your yeah, keywords? I, I, like when you when you, if you go on Craigslist, like what's your default? Like oh, I gotta see if this is on here. What do you what do you type in? I don't even honestly like that's what I'm saying. Like I don't even like really search. I just you just cruise. When I go on. I just browse. Like I might search for like actually the thing because I you know I'm trying to sell that. I was trying to sell the the custom Defender. I only got it listed on um, OfferUp. I never put it on Craigslist. Mm. So I might so actually I might search for like I might do put a search for like trade. Right yeah. now, are like two amp, just to see, um, just to see if anybody's looking for a two amp. Unfortunately, like I put in two amp and and it's just people selling two amps. Yeah. Right I always now, get on there. Um, and I trade trade is one that I often do. Like, see who's trade wants a trade. Um, I'll I'll type in surf, just to see like what gets listed as like a surf guitar, and it's usually just guitars that are surf green. But every now and then, you know, like oh, yeah. there's offsets on there and stuff, or like one of those Yamahas that I want. Um, or I'll search for like a Vibra Lux or f- just Fender amp in general and see what comes up. So, what? How long do you think after like quarantine ends? Do you think all this business will blow over? You think we're, you think we're months away from things kind of going back to the way they were? Or you think we're years? I don't think we're years. I think, you know, um, from what I was seeing today, and I guess maybe it depends on if it like drags out afterwards, but like at least in the short term, um, it seems like the economy as a whole is going to stabilize. Maybe it stabilizes a little lower. Yeah, but you think Um, you think about the people who who this industry is built on. They're, you know, they're check to check people. They're people getting hit hard yeah. by this. They're, you know, they're, it's going to take them, even if the economy bounces back, that's great for the economy, but, you know, that doesn't help, well, you know, people well, I think making like, where... like touring money or, you know, gigging money or whatever, like, or people who work, you know, other jobs to finance, you know, their guitar hobby or whatever. I don't know. I think it's going to be rough well, I think for, that's for a, a lot of people a, for a long time. I think that's a little bit of like the wild card on it all is, um, you know, I think for the hobby, like I said, the hobbyists, I don't think it's going to be like the a, a huge deal. Um, but I can definitely see how for like professional musicians or like semi-professional musicians, how it's going to be like a much bigger issue. You know, what? here's because a-, a lot of, you know, a lot of these guys are going to have to like, dig out now i my understanding is that um the 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 legislation that was passed they did it figure out a way to include get, like 1099s on that so yeah. so that's good here here's my pitch we found out in this whole thing who the real heroes of society are they're you know the the grocery store clerks they're the fast food yeah. workers. They're the nurses. They're th- these people that we didn't really think about before. 
And now we're like, those are the heroes keeping our society going at the moment. Uh, we need a hero, an unexpected hero for the gear industry to come in to keep our beloved, you know, smaller builders and companies going to keep food on the table for these builders. I'm talking about the blues doctors, the rock lawyers, the jazz dentists. Now's your time to flex. Rich boys. You need the mirror universe. They need this the mirror universe super rich Steve. Right, right. <laughs> the super rich Steve that's good. Because we have the we have the yeah, evil yeah. one. If, <laughs> if, if our universe super rich Steve is chaotic evil, yeah. then you have to imagine that mirror universe super rich Steve is chaotic good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or lawful evil. You might be a different direction. Um <laughs> Gee, I hope not. <laughs> but anyways, like yeah, now's your now's your time to shine. Like you get teased a lot online by the hobby musicians, by the gigging musicians, by people like, oh, you're just you just have a lot of extra money, and that's why you get to buy this stuff. Come in, be the heroes you can be with your money, and save the companies that are gonna be on hard times right now because everyone else can't afford to scratch their gear itch, or they can't afford to buy gear when they're not gigging. Uh, all you rich boys out there, all you rich girls out there, be the be the heroes. It's your destiny. Now's your time. We will we will praise you if you get out there. Go buy a, a couple milkman amps. Go commission a cower guitar. You know, do stuff like that. Put some throw some money around. If this if this whole situation isn't hurting you and you think you're gonna make it and you got piles of money, time to flex, boys. What do you think about that? I mean, I think I think that's a big part of it. I think, you know, if you've got some kind of some kind of safety net already in place. Yeah. Um, you know, if you can see far enough, you know, I I've, I've been talking to I've been talking to my wife about this cuz we're trying to figure out kind of a little bit of navigation on it. And I'm kind of in the space where I'm looking at it and going like, well, you know, like we've got a little bit of of extra like it's not a bad time to invest for mm -hmm. us like i don't have a much of a retirement so so i'm kind of looking at that so um um you've also I, got and, a job when, where it's like you just go to an office and there's a couple people around and you're yeah not, yeah you're like and the, pub, the public's not coming like, in yeah i'm still working yeah um and uh and you know my wife like our conversation has been um has been kind of revolved around like, well, what if the, the economy just takes a downturn? Like everything you've invested is going to be gone. And like, I've, I feel like I've been investing fairly broadly. Like I don't really do individual stocks yeah. right now. I just do like broad funds. And so I kind of just told her, I was like, look, like if the stuff I've invested in like hits rock bottom, then we have bigger problems. Yo, totally. Yeah. I mean, and, I, and you know, I think yeah. there, I think there's a lot to that. Like, if you've already got a solid setup, like, and you've got, you've still got your play cash, like, I think we're, we're in good space. Like, if you hit a space where, like, legitimately, like, you can't find, like, you can't go to the store at six o'clock in the morning and find, like, a six pack of toilet paper, um, then, then, you know, and that's, that's the state for, like, a couple weeks, uh, then, then we have bigger problems. Uh, because we're probably ha are on the verge of entering like right. genuine hellscape. Yeah, Mad Max um, future. And, and and that's not to discount like a lot of people are like I get it like a lot of people are in a place where where things are so uncertain it, it's very stressful. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of people are staying home and and hopefully you know the the socialist policies that our government are is currently engaging in will yeah. will help us in the near future the the <laughs> the uh, the checks from our socialist president yeah uh you know vote for andrew yang i guess uh, <laughs> jeez no like you know i think i think we're, i think we're despite some some hiccups at the beginning like i think at least people are trying. There's at least like some silver lining with it all. Yeah, and, yeah. and I think, I think if we're smart right now, if we're smart for like the next two or three weeks, like 
obviously today is the day where we became the world leader in uh in SARS-CoV-2 infections, so that's not a great place to be. But, We're um, number one. We're number one. We did it, Steve. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's pretty dark. Like, let's it be is. honest. It but. is. It's very dark, and I, I don't think people fully. I mean, at the time of this recording and this past week, I think more people are finally starting to realize where it's going. Uh, but by the time this comes out, maybe it'll be even darker, and people will see kind of the potential for what this could be. I mean, I, the, the thing I've, I've been saying today is like, I'm just unfollowing people on Facebook that clearly don't understand numbers. Right. Because there's, you know, this mentality out there with some people like, oh, it's only like, like one to 3% at most. That's not very many people. Like, dude, look at your Facebook friends list. You got 300 people in there. Like six to a dozen of your friends are gonna die. Like, that's what those percentages mean. Like, yeah, it's it's bigger than yeah, you think. It, it, like one percent doesn't sound like a lot, but one percent in something like this is huge. And people are foolishly comparing it to the regular flu that happens every year, when the mortality on that is a hundredth of a percent, and they don't understand. Right. They don't understand the difference. You know. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know what the, the comparative numbers and they're changing all the time. But yeah. I mean, I think that is the big, the biggest thing. It's like the potential is real. Know, the potential. I hope it does. I hope it doesn't happen. But the potential is very frightening. Yeah, and it's like people and, and to that, you know, I think that's the thing that I, I'm, I've been seeing the most is you know, if you're not going to, you can't just discount the percentages because they're saying it's small. You have to think about it from the bigger picture of like, okay, if you're gonna, like you said, like. Okay, if you have 300 friends and it's 1%, that's that's 3 people. So go through your friends list and pick the 3 people that you think should die. It might know? be you. It might be you don't get to pick. It could it could be someone you care very right, deeply for. Right. It could be the person who well, just added you last week, you know, whatever. <laughs> even if you even if you pick yourself, you still have to pick two more people. Right. I mean, it if if the worst case scenario happens here, everyone on the planet is going to know someone who died. They just will. Right. From this. Um, so it's going to affect other everyone thing, personally. The other thing that was mentioned is Steph Penfield mentioned, like, should we even be buying stuff? Yeah. You know, because of the warehouses and shipping is a mess. Um, and, and again, Ryan Rutaski mentioned that Matoverse effects, um, has actually stopped all shipping to at least do a small part to alleviate, um, all of the shipping companies and I can say like that's that's a real thing like um, yeah. and this t you know when I say this out loud it sounds so um, it feels so trivial but like I didn't get my hello fresh order this week oh Steve I'm so sorry and, and it's like <laughs> well I'm, really and, and like I you. said like when you well when you name drop it like that sound it sounds trivial right, but right. like that's that's like three meals that yeah what if you were dependent that, on actually that? it's actually even What's that? What if you were dependent on that, you know? Right. Well, and, and the thing is, it's actually like even worse because because it's not that it was never shipped. It's that it was shipped and sat in the warehouse for so long that whoever the shipping company was sent it back to HelloFresh. Wow. Yeah. So, it, it, so not only is it like we didn't get the food that we would have cooked this week and now you know now we you know the flip side of it is now we have to go to the store and, and now we risk exposure and whatever and like i said maybe that sounds it's may sound kind of trivial but the other side of it is that's like six meals that just got are getting thrown away yeah totally uh so that it's also just a waste of food it's a it's a waste of, of overall resources i had a i had a package show up today that had a new label slapped over the original label and it was like a post office label, and it had. I wish I'd taken a picture of it. I ripped it in half and threw it away. Uh, it had some uh, uh, jump mo mo jumbo on there that was like package passed for delivery, cleared, cleared inspection or something like that. Like it, it like it, it had to pass like a rung of like, like is this worthwhile even sending right now? And eventually, someone decided to send oh, it wow. to me. And it was it was a dumb, you know, Dan Electro pedal that I ordered like a month ago, and finally it made it to me. <laughs> but yeah, the the shipping companies are doing triage right now, trying to figure out what is essential, basically. Yeah, yeah. 
let's uh let's wrap this up. Let's uh let's do our last two ads and then get out of here. Let's do an ad sponsor and then sure. ad. Uh, I, yeah, yeah. This, uh, has this, been, this has been enough topic for for one episode. I mean, it's heavy enough anyway. Yeah. Jeez. Uh, this next ad was sent by a Darren Schmeis. Uh, he says, uh, "Hi everyone. This is a this is the screenshot he sent. Uh, I recently completed a build. I had a mind for myself, and a friend suggested I should start taking custom orders. So I decided, why not? The basic idea is that I can create a bass or guitar that is any shape or size." The concept is to bring a completely customizable and unique instrument, excuse me, at the price of a squire. If you can draw it, I can build it simple as any pickup configuration. This is just like a real episode. I've got the beer hiccups now. <laughs> um, well, you haven't been able to see, Steve. I've been taking hits off a tequila bottle. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing the real party uh, over here. I am missing out tonight. Uh, <laughs> I, can't do, I can't do that when you're here because... <laughs> You'll drink all my tequila. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um, any pickup configuration, any CL length, any string counter configuration, you name it. My first build was the G3, and I've improved a lot since then. Uh, P- I mean, I guess, like, I will agree that from the G3 to these other strange designs, um, this person has improved. Because the G3 looks like it was uh, routed with a spoon. I mean, these definitely the other look, ones look like these definitely look like someone hand drew them. <laughs> the one, the one that looks the strangest is also the one that looks the least like a hack, complete hack job. Yeah, it, it almost circles around to charming. It's like this really wild, like Dan Electra Longhorn sort of concept, but with like a fretless neck and a big old like Ernie yeah. Ball humbucker uh, pickup on it. It's, now it's the E string, so, I don't, I don't know. It's so weird that it's charming, you know. Yeah, I don't Where know the if it's the are, angle. The others are clearly failures. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's the angle on that one, but it does look like the E string is not actually on the neck. Uh, um, yeah, it's pretty close to the edge. This Rickenbacker object is strangely phallic. Yeah, even more phallic than um, normal. Yeah. And this G3 is just like, I, feel I don't, like the G3 when I first is the saw it, I thought, it, you think it's the best? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's the closest. So like, if you saw this from a hundred feet away, you wouldn't question it as much as the other two. Yeah. Well, maybe the yeah, Rickenbacker, but as the soon Rickenbacker as I, might be a little closer. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The Rickenbacker from a hundred feet away, I go. Oh, wow, that's a cool-looking Rickenbacker. And then from 99 feet away, I'm just like, what in God's name is that thing? <laughs> they, Oh, my gosh. Look look at the bridge for the G3. It was a five-string bridge, and he's <laughs> it's centered on the bottom four strings. So it's like the bridge that, itself that is... Ex- <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> that explains... I was trying to figure out what, what uh, was going on because... The strings are so close to each other. I needed this ad after our topic, after our dark, dark topic. <laughs> <laughs> this is just so bad. Oh, my um, Lord. You know, I, I'm just going to say this. Uh, he said, a friend suggested I should do this. That person is not your friend. No, that person needs to be out of your life and you need to stop taking advice from people. You need a friend in your life that tells you, uh, n- maybe not to stop, but go take a class, like a general woodworking class. And yeah, go- I mean the heart is the heart is there, and this obviously takes some effort. Yeah, way more effort than I've put in on any of my builds because I still have a uh, Ibanez Roadstar that's been sitting in a bag for I don't even know how long now. I mean, th- this guy is saying he'll do this at, for you f- for the price of a squire. Is he talking classic vibe or is he talking affinity? Is what I want to know because uh, at affinity prices. <laughs> Uh, it's almost like an outsider art thing. I, it, if he was local, I might commission him to make me something for, you know, like 180 or something. But if he wants 350, I'm, I'm out. Right, right. He's got to be sourcing I, I mean, maybe just these necks from somewhere else. He's not making these necks. Yeah. Well, the one neck the on that wish base looking thing. The longhorn. That neck's a trip. That neck actually looks really cool. Um... In a, in a really wonky way. It's got a really wild finish on it. 
Well, yeah, it looks cool in a way that like bass, like it's all like avant, you know, bass guitars just tend to be a little more uh, avant garde friendly in terms of um, yeah. wood, wood choices, like a little more exotic, I guess, with wood choices. I got to say, though, um, I've, I've kind of always wanted there to be a kit guitar that already has like a strat neck heel routed out and a strat bridge uh cutaway routed out and then the body itself is just a big like rectangle and i could just cut out my own shape and know that the the neck heel and the bridge is going to be lined up and everything else is going to be lined up underneath it uh like i feel like this person could benefit from that sort of concept you know like you get right you get just get this block everything else is set up and lined up right, and you can just go crazy with the shapes and make whatever you want, like bust out your your handsaw and do your worst, you know. Yeah, the one of the issues I have with this too is these are basses, and they the this person does say that they also do guitars, but I want to see an example of a guitar. Yeah, I, <laughs> bass. I, I sorry if this is insulting to you, uh, long guitar boys. I feel like it's a little bit more forgiving in the design department, like basis already like kind of weird shapes and wild shapes. And those big strings give you a little bit more, uh, forgiveness. Like I was saying, there's more room for error maybe because the spacing is wider. No, uh, there totally is. I, with a guitar, I, f I feel like there's just so much more room. And also like if you're slightly out of tune with a bass, it's not as big of a deal. Like if if you can't right. if you can't intonate something this guy builds for a guitar, it's it's gonna feel really wonky. And like two two out of three are fretless. Like I don't know if he works with frets very well. <laughs> he kind of leans into that fretless thing, which is also pretty forgiving. Yeah, yeah. Uh, overall, I mean, I don't know. Like you put this on a marketplace, but. <sighs> Like I said, I, know, I maybe mean, start off with some one one eighty under two hundred bucks. If I was feeling like frisky and was in hitting the bottle hard enough, I might be like, "Yeah, make me something. <laughs> Let's see what you can do." <laughs> but I mean, yeah. I think above two hundred bucks, I'm not throwing money at this guy. Right, right. I mean, are you ready some... to? Uh, there is something kind of interesting about the thought of a very like stripped down punk rock version of a Rickenbacker, you know, this like a plywood plywood version of a Rickenbacker, single pickup, basic controls, you know. Just I'm actually trying. I was trying to figure out what the controls are on this. It looks like it was they're like sliders. Yeah, I can't figure out what we're looking at there. I'm just saying like a fantasy build for me, like. And instead of having a fancy Rickenbacker, have like a really stripped down, like right. Rickenbacker special, if such a thing exists, you know. All right, take us, yeah. uh, take us to housekeeping, Steve. Oh, you want to do some housekeeping, or should we you do, do a sponsor? Spot let's first? do a sponsor spots first. I, you know, what, let's do the housekeeping next week. Cause I don't. I okay. feel like doing a sponsor and housekeeping back to back is just uh, yeah, it's a lot. It's a little a lot. self indulgent. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this week's uh, this week's episode is also brought to you by Diderio. You got all the MXT strings still? You got some more coming, right? Did you already uh, get those? Yeah, they already came in, and uh, you're sitting right next. Cardboard Steve is sitting right next to me. And I'm about to give you the base strings that I ordered for you. Here you go. Oh, thanks, Cardboard Steve. Let's see if I can put it in your shirt. There you go. You are wearing a shirt, by the way. I don't know if you were aware of that. <laughs> I, I, I actually I saw that. I saw the picture. So uh, in, um, enjoy those to... enjoy those bass strings, Steve. I, I'm there. <laughs> Have you ever used uh, coated bass strings before? I haven't. So I mean, bass strings so already last pretty long. These are going to last you forever, I think. Yeah, I, it'll be it'll definitely be cool. I haven't used the XT. I've been using. Um, on our church base, I have the Diodario uh, half wounds. Ah, yeah. But I don't think they have a they don't have a half wound version of the XT. Yeah, I also got um, a pile of regular guitar strings for myself. I should give you a pack or two of these too to to put on a guitar. Yeah, that'd be cool. I'm holding them up like you could see them, but you can't like the. 
the viewers. I, I can. I, I, Steve I'm can there see. in spirit. <laughs> um, um, also, uh, yeah. So go go check out those strings, man. Yeah. Like if you, we we talk about it, but there we talk about it this every week. But the the Dario XTs, like they've got that super thin coating. There's uh, yeah. that carbon steel from the NYXL series. I don't know if you um, watched just my fantastic strings. I don't know if you watched my video of me stripping the the finish off my Strat. Um, I haven't, but it super bummed me out because I I had to trim the strings off of that. You know, the, I'm not going to save strings while I'm reading right. the Strat. Uh, so I trimmed them off, and those were the first set of these strings I put on a guitar like three months ago, and I've been playing that guitar. They were still glossy and they were still shiny. They didn't have any Jeez. like corrosion or gunk on them. They still felt slick. And it's like it's a waste of strings that I have to trim these now. But you know, I'm I'm gonna change tuners on that guitar, and it's just like once you pull a string out of a tuner, like it, the the tuners that aren't split top, you know, it's just over. They're not going back in. Yeah. So. Yeah. I was like, sure. ah, this is over. But you know, they're they're not terribly expensive. I think they're like twelve bucks or something like that in the grand scheme of things. A string that's gonna last you and stay feeling fresh and twangy. For months, I feel like that's a much better value than like a five dollar or six dollar set of strings. Yeah, that's what I've been I, like. Honestly, like if Diderio stops sponsoring us, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep buying these strings because I really I really like them. I've been putting the Elevens on like my more surfy guitars for like a heavier surf feel. I think I'm in love with them. It's pretty great. And I I used the, to the uh, regular. Uh, I the re the regular lights are thirteen dollars at Sweetwater. That ain't bad, man. I like the purple elevens. I'm sold on these. That's all I'm saying. Also, Dedario is going to send us uh, some sort of like musicians backpack at some point that they want us to uh, cover oh, cool. for our sponsorship instead of the strings. Um, but you know, I think they just posted the other day that they're completely sh shutting down the New York shop over there. So I don't know yeah. if, if it's already in the mail or. If or if we're going to have to wait till that comes in, but they have this cool like backpack you can go check out that, you know, is made yeah. to, it's like a roadie bag. It's made to fit all your cables and all your, you know, supplies yeah. and everything like that. It's a backpack for musicians. Got, guys, just go uh, next time you're at your local shop and you don't know what's kind of, you know, if you, if you're like, like the space I'm in, it's like, I'll take my guitar in to get worked on. I'm like, here's my guitar. And like when, you know, when I'm getting, getting a setup done, they're like, well, what strings do you want? And always I'm like, like they'll be like, oh, well, we usually use whatever brand. I'm like, no, like put on to Dario's. I'll pay the difference. Like, don't even worry about it. Like, just it's do not it. it's not like they're even like an expensive string. It's not like the string I think of like, oh, that's like, oh, the yeah. fancy pants expensive string. It's the everyday string. But man, these XTs and I tried the N NYXLs when those came out and I didn't like them. I was a little worried when we got sponsored by them. Like, oh, they're going to have us promote those. But I really like these XTs. <laughs> <laughs> I really like them. I really you know, do. You know who else? Uh, you know who else is episode sponsored by, Ryan? Who? Chase Bliss Audio. Oh, what? <laughs> I forgot that was going to happen. <laughs> I've got a box right here that just yeah. came in today. And this is where I'm going to catch coronavirus. Uh, I, no, I think it, it shipped out uh, a couple days ago. So it's just been sitting in a... Uh, in a truck somewhere. But I've got a box from Chase Bliss. I figured I might as well unbox it as our sponsorship here. I think I'm doing it upside down. I didn't want to cut through the top label for some stupid reason. Here, I'll do a cool reveal right. by I'm, lifting the box off of it. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let you talk talk through this unboxing right now. This is their new cardboard box. They don't do the wood box anymore. I got the blooper. Obviously I'm gonna do a demo of this. Ooh, it's pretty in there. This is the first I've seen of their new boxes. Nice uh, nice reveal when you open it up. And it's got a USB cable in there for some reason. I guess a blooper has a, has a USB function. And then I requested to Joel. You still there? Okay, you went... You, you, get, you gated out for a second. I was scared. I requested to Joel to send me a Chase Plus pedal that I haven't had... But I feel like I could get good use out of in videos. The brothers. So I'm holding up a brothers to the camera right now, which is their drive and fuzz and preamp style pedal. It says analog gain stage on it. I've been wanting to mess around with one of those for a while. So I've got two new Chase Bliss pedal hotnesses to mess around with here. And I'm pretty excited about it. 
I'm, re I'm excited to mess to check out that blooper. I mean, it's, it's supposed to be pretty freaking wild for a looper pedal, like a creative like loop building situation instead of you know like more cut and dry like build a loop with your playing like like build a loop and then tweak it and get weird with it sort of thing. All right, go check them out. Chase plus pedals, <laughs> they're more creative than you are. And I'm going to do some coverage of uh, a new pedal and one of their classic old pedals soon on the YouTube channel. All right, Steve, you ready to hit uh, this last ad and get out of here? You there? <laughs> yeah, just a second. Oh, there he is. <laughs> I stepped away from El Microphone. Um, this last ad was sent by Daniel Esporma. He sends us a lot of good ads. Yeah, he's a, uh, this is the, he's a real uh, ad buster right now. Yeah, this is a guitar nut buster tune stabilizing <laughs> system. The guitar nut buster is an attachable and completely non-invasive uh, locking tune stabilizing system that's easy to use and offers significant control over the most common tuning problems. This will attach to anything. It's got a picture of it attached to a Strat. Yeah. Uh, attached to a uh, Gibson style. Anything attached to another. Anything with another enough Fender guitar space in between the nut and your first couple tuners on the headstock. This will fit onto. Uh, attached like. to another Fender guitar. It's attached to three different Fender guitars and one Gibson guitar. That's all the guitars. Sure, sure. That's all the guitars there are. Well, this is an interesting concept because it's a locking nut that sits behind your nut but floats off the wood of the neck or the headstock. And it's not bolted, bolted down to anything. Um, so the physical concept here is that by locking into all the strings, like clamping yeah. onto all the strings, if one string is, it'll keep all the strings in tune, basically. Like they're all clamped together, like like something would have to go dramatically wrong for the tension to change for one of the strings to go out of tune. Which I guess I kind of get. I think the concept probably works. But I also feel like this is a really bulky way to go about that. Like it's just a well, really bulky device. So there's a couple things going on here, right? One is that um, it's got this micro tuning capability. So this is like this piece is a combination of a couple different um, technologies. You know, this is a this is a Floyd Rose nut basically combined with the Floyd Rose micro tuners yeah. all on a piece that that goes on there the the actual I you know I say a Floyd Rose nut but what it actually reminds me of is um the Fender locking nuts uh, yeah. from the contemporary series in the 80s yeah were um set up with the lock it was it wasn't a locking nut it was a locking string tree yeah yeah and this is more like a locking string tree that's exactly now, what, what it's I like wonder, what I what I wonder is like what prevents this from, because in the pictures at least, and maybe I need, need to watch a video, um, but it seems like it's just kind of floating. It is. It's not touching anything. It's just holding onto the strings. So it's like, how does that keep? Like I guess like it's because the, how does that keep it? It's 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 like a, a suspension bridge. Like because all the strings are taut. It's supporting the you know the other strings that might go out of tune, like instead of like one string is not going to go out of tune because the other strings are are bound to it and resisting it with right, their with I, their tension. And I guess because you have like six different string, like six different contacts contact points basically. Yeah. Um, you if if you break a string, for example. The other five strings are going to support that, right? I, you know, I still, I still so I wonder if, how that translates. Break, I, I think if you break a string, you're still screwed. Like, it's going to change. It's going to change the the tension across even just the neck against the truss rod, and you're going to lose yeah, tension if you break a string. Yeah. And if you've got, I mean, the reason to have this is if you have a tremolo, if your trim is floating right. at all, if you got a Bigsby and you break a string, it's going to be, it's just going to be out. You're going to be out of luck. Um. 
which is right. an, another one of my issues. I was watching the video of the guy presenting this thing on the site, and it's a very colorful vi video, very uh, colorful character presenting it. Um, uh, but he was using guitars with Bigsby's and just dive bombing them and go going crazy on them. And it's like, yeah, you're solving an issue that might exist around the nut, but you still get bridge issues with Bigsby's. Right. And you get other issues. Like you, you can get pinging and tinging on your bridge and your strings won't return to where they were before you started abusing it. So it's not a solve everything solution here. Even if it works as well as they claim it works. To me, it just seems like it's bulky. I think it was kind of expensive. I think it was like 175 or something like that. I might be might be wrong on that. But and also the way it's built, like you can't clamp it around the strings once the strings are on. You have to string the guitar through it. And, right. And if if you want to take it off, you have to take the strings completely off the guitar. Yeah. And slide the strings back through it. Like it's got a hole. It doesn't it doesn't like clamp over or anything like that. And I feel like that's I don't know. I I, I feel like I it, it's a non mover for me. I, I'm I'm out. Like I'm not interested. Like if, if I could throw this on an existing guitar without having to redo the strings, I might be more into it. I might be willing to try it out, but as its function is right now, I'm just, I'm just, I don't know. I'm not sold. I'm not sold. I don't, I don't, I'm not totally convinced that this thing is like a problem solver, but that the issue you brought up, like doesn't really like that's if I break, generally if I break one string, I'm going to replace all the strings. Right. But you like know, if, so. you, if you want to throw this on a guitar, you have to start with a fresh set of strings. Well, you, so you just got to wait until the next, like, I don't know. I'm, I'm fine. I, I'm down You're to fine wait. with that. You're fine with that. All right. Like, it doesn't bother me that I'm going to have to wait, you know, if I buy this thing. Like, if I bought this thing, like, any of the guitars I have. Dude, you just got a bunch of freaking strings from D'Addario. No, like, I'm talking, you could buy I'm talking this thing. from the perspective of an, of an everyday player. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm just I, saying, I, like, if, if the, I'd have to try you this have, thing to believe like, in it. I don't believe in it. If as you it feel is now. like I'm just saying, if you have, if you have a guitar and you feel like that guitar has tuning problems and you bought this thing, now granted this thing is like $175, but the cost of implementation of this thing is an extra like 12 bucks uh, for a yeah, set of okay. strings. Okay. I don't I don't think it's that big of a deal to solve a pr uh, if you think you have a problem. Now, whether or not this thing works, like, I, I don't know. It, it definitely looks like it should work. Sure, sure. The fact that it floats is still kind of, like, funky to me. But, but I, you know, like I said, I understand how it's held in place by the other strings. I do like the fact that the uh, the Allen key is is uh, the actual the guitar nut buster itself is, is magnetic or it has a magnetic strip on it. So your Allen key just mounts to it. I'm uh, not sure. Really I'm cool. not sure if that if it actually mounts or if that's just how they're presenting it. Because on one photo, it's not no, in no. there, or is um, it? No, it's in there. It's just hiding. Yeah, it's either magnetic or it's clipped in there, or something like that. It just it's a, it's a I I I saw it. It has a it's a magnetic clip. Yeah, like it's a magnetized portion that the Allen key just snaps into. Interesting. Or not? It doesn't snap. It it it's it's yeah, a magnet. It, yeah, it attaches. It sticks. It's a How the heck do trend. they work? I don't know, man. It's magic. <laughs> magic. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. ICP reference, guys. <laughs> it's, it's the year 2020, and we're referencing. Are we so cool? Isn't that song like seven years old now or something? Is it only seven years old? I feel like it's, 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 it's pretty old at this point. So it I don't, is, I don't it know. Is if ten it, year, it is ten years old. If any, is it is it, eleven years old. Is it eleven years old? It came out in two thousand nine, according to Google. Holy hell! Yeah, it's super old. Well, I guess it was rec it was recorded in two thousand nine. Um, oh, it was released as a single in two thousand ten, but it was on a two thousand nine album. That's wild. Oh man, there's a Lonely Island. Uh, parody of it called incredible thoughts i i need to, i feel like i need to watch that it's probably better than the yeah. actual song all right get us out of here with the with the song steve thanks for everyone for listening uh hopefully this turns out in post uh with our magic editing skills um 
Yeah, yeah. This uh, we, this song was sent by. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we might have to do uh, this a couple song, more times. Is is what I was gonna say. So. Yeah, get, get uh, this song was sent by uh, by Kerry Dykstra. Um, he is in a band called Dumpster Fire, uh, nice. and the gear used on this was a PRS uh, SE Mark Tremonti into a Jet City Amelia through a custom 2x12 with a pair of warehouse guitar speakers HM75s. Uh, again, the band is called Dumpster Fire, and this song is called Alanis. All right. Well, we're not going to listen to it now. We're going to do it old school and just cut it in. But uh, thanks for sending the song, and I'm sure it's cool. Bye, everybody. Yeah. Stay grounded. Stay grounded. I got